Welcome back to Cinema Flix Music Picks. I'm your host with the most of the beast, but at least Davey. At least we can do today is a haul video, a pickup video, whatever the kids are calling them these days, um, of what I've picked up or hauled in the last month or so. Two months probably since I've done one of these. I've been so consumed with Jimmy Stewart. I hate him in my sleep. Doesn't feel, hmm, no, no, I don't feel this beanie. It's not conducive to a whole video. Okay, okay. Patch that. That's a bit more like it. Memo to self, edit this out. Always remember these things. So you'll never even see this, but if you did, that would just make me look like an absolute fool. Seamless. So let's just let's just crack on. Um, not very many music pickups recently. Um, just with there's been some expensive things coming up for pre-order, which will be in the next month or so. And then there was a video I put up recently of the Super Deluxe Stingray, and that was 120 odd quid. So <laughs> and that was a Stingray indeed. Uh, it was deadly than the one that killed Steve Irwin. Um, oh, that was a bit too soon. Nah, I'll go with it. Don't care. Sorry, Australia. Um, we're going with, first of all, bloody name of the album again. Something Multitudes. New Multitudes? Yeah, New Multitudes. Um, it's, if you are a fan of the Mermaid Avenue albums with uh, Billy Bragg and Wilco, there was two of them, and then a volume three, which isn't quite a volume three, it's mostly it takes from volumes one and two. Um, then this is more of the same. It is not Billy Bragg and Wilco, because they don't speak very much anymore. They had a few fallings out. Um, but it's a, a kind of alt rock, um, alt folk rock, really, a super group um, led by J. Farrar from Uncle Tupelo, some vote. Um, and Jim James, or Yim Yims as he goes by on his solo career from My Morning Jacket. Um, so it's again unreleased Woody Guthrie lyrics put to music. Um, so yeah, pretty fan dabby and dozy if I do say so myself. Nothing much to write home about with the, uh, you know, they're going with the more kind of punky aesthetic for the cover. Very, you know, but it, it's really good. If you like, if you like any MMJ, if you like any. Um, Early Tupelo, more than from later Sun Vote, should we say, then this is definitely for you. Uh, an album that's really great, and I've been trying to pick up for ages and pff, just didn't happen. It went out of print really fast. Um, and then I found one on Discogs for £7. Um, is Beach Boy Owl Jardines, postcard from California. Yeah. Um, this features a certain Brian Wilson. Um, it's from 2010 um, and also features a certain Neil Young. Um, so, so that's a nice little, little record. And it shows once more, as you know, people will tell you if you actually pay attention, that um, the heart and soul of the Beach Boys was always Brian Wilson, but their secret weapon, um, well, Carl and Dennis no longer with us, but their secret weapon, was Al Jardine, man, he was great. Help me run, there was all Al. Um, and he still got it. He still got it. When they did that reunion and Make Love fired Al Jardine and Brian Wilson on the same day in 2012, the album was, so I want to say 13, he fired them. <laughs> That's like Partick Thistle Fire and Lionel Messi. I mean, for fuck's sake, getting fired by Make Love. Prick. But yeah, we love Al. This is his uh, only his second school album. The first one was just a live thing with his family. Uh, and Brian's family, oddly, you know the Wilson daughters from uh, from the eighties, the from Wilson Phillips. If you remember Wilson Phillips, um, just cool breezy California album. It's exactly what you expect, but more importantly, it's exactly what you want, which you can't say for a lot of Beach Boys post nineteen seventy eight nine ish. So yeah, Al Jardine solo album. New one from Graham Nash again, um, legacy act, but. He's performing his first two solo records, Songs for Beginners and Wild Tales, live in their entirety. Um, mostly from shows in Boston and New York. In fact, pretty much all from Boston, with a little bit of Albany thrown in along the way. 
Um, no great surprises here. It's Graham Nash. It's terribly pleasant. It's it's what you expect from Graham Nash. Pretty much my review for Al is what you get with Graham Nash. If you love Graham Nash's solo work, and you should, because it's really good. So is all across the stills Nash and Young. Um, but um, oh, come on, that first album, Songs for Beginners, Military Madness. Uh, used to be a king. Uh, Man in the Mirror, Chicago. Won't you please come to Chicago for the help that you can bring? We can change the world. Yeah, um, it's wonderfully idealistic. Ages perfectly because these songs were written for the late 60s, early 70s, but could be written about any time about political upheaval, so ages fantastically. Um, Wild Tales is a little bit more personal and introspective. Just great aging singer songwriter stuff, um, and wonderful to have Graham reflect on his younger self. So yeah, thank you, Graham. Music. What's next? Um, a few music Blu-rays. Um, one I just never picked up for some reason, even though I love the band. Um, Arcade's Fire Reflector tapes. Um, I picked this up because the new album's so bloody good. Um, and it just made me go, I bet you I'm missing a few Arcade Fire things, and I'm sure enough missing this. Um, but yeah, I love Arcade Fire, man. Th especially about this era. Um, the first three, four albums are really my jam, but the, the latest one is the best since Reflector. Um, so yeah, um, it's a live concert with a documentary. So you get the Reflector tapes, which is a film, and then you get live at Earl's Court, which is from 2008 to the, no, excuse me, 2010, I think I want, want to say, which does like the best tracks from the first uh, four albums. So it's fantastic. Just fantastic. Unless you don't like Arcade Fire, in which case, probably not for you. Uh, Blu ray audio. I always try and pick up Blu ray audios when I find them if they're of interest, even if it's um, something I've, I've got on other formats, because you hardly ever see Blu ray audios in the wild. Um, and this is an album that I've got on, God, I think I've got two vinyl copies and two CD copies. Yeah. Um, and now I believe the audio, it's um, John Coltrane's Love Supreme. I don't think I really need to tell anybody how great Love Supreme is, but blurry audio, I mean obviously if you want the analogue then go for <coughs> one of the vinyl pressings. There's some great ones out there, um, still in print. Um, but, you know, even this gives you the, you know, the full inner, so you know, pretty fantastic. Um, Blurry audio, you know, it's in 7.1, it sounds stunning. If you've got the setup for it, it's just absolutely un unbelievable. Um, recorded at Van Gelder Studios way back in '64, so I'm mean, you know, from, from day one to be recorded by Rudy Van Gelder, you know, it's. Do you need to hear any more about about uh, Love Supreme? Ditto for this box set version of Kinda Blue. Um, again, I think I've got three of this in vinyl, maybe three or four on CD, because it's in numerous like five packs and three packs and things. Um, and this has got um, two CDs and a DVD. So you get um, the whole album, obviously, then you get all the outtakes of flamenco sketches, Freddy Freeloader, So What, All Blues, and then this two on Green Dolphin Street, Fran Dance, Stella by Starlight, Love for Sale, Alternate Fran Dance, and another So What. Um, and then disc three is the DVD celebrating a masterpiece, The Sound of Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. So just specifically about this album, 81 minutes. 81 minutes. This, Amazon, 12.99. And that wasn't like one seller had a copy. Um, th that was just the price. You know, and it comes with a, uh, the old uh, 6i label on the CDs. And, you know, it's a big old book. You know, it's um, full of stuff. You know, really nice. And there's your DVD at the back again on a kind of inverted Columbia 6i. Uh, yeah, abs absolutely unreal. So, but. Amazon must have had overstock or something because at the same time they had the 40th box set of Bitches Brew. Um, this one also, two CDs and DVD. Um, so you get 
Um, Bitches Brew, obviously, on, on disc one. Um, disc two. So I think it's three CDs, actually, if I remember right. Is this three? Yeah, this is three in a DVD. Um, so you get Bitches Brew on disc one um, and two with uh, all the alternates afterwards because it doesn't quite, you know, it would be a bit of a shortness to um, so you get like Spanish Key alternate to it, John McLaughlin, Mel runs the voodoo down, Spanish Key, Expectation single edit, Little Blue Frog single edit, Great Expectation single edit, Disc 3 CD is live at Tanglewood with an intro from Bill Graham of uh, Fillmore and Winterland fame. Uh, with directions, bitches brew the mask. It's about that time. Sanctuary, Spanish key, the theme. Miles runs the voodoo town. Down, sorry. Um, and then the DVD is live in Copenhagen, so Denmark. For you geography nuts. Um, and that's seventy minutes long. And it's directions. Miles runs the voodoo down. Bitches, bitches brew. Bitches brew. <laughs> um, Pierce trousers in the brew as well. Agitation. I fall in love too easily. <laughs> Yeah, that's not exactly something you'd say about Miles, is it? I don't think love was on his mind. Me and Drew Betty was a lovely lady. Uh, Sanctuary is about that time in the theme, so pretty much the same set list as Tanglewood, but two separate concerts, that's pretty nifty. Um, and unlike Kind of Blue, they've used the, the kind of wrap round of the the uh, the original album rather than go with just the, you know, that, that iconic cover, which, I don't know, I, I think I'd still have preferred the, the iconic cover to be used, but once more, you know, here we go. I mean, there's the wrap round there, so you can see what they've done. They've kind of just plucked that from the middle of the wrap round um, of the gatefold, but you know, tis what tis. So, big full book. <laughs> yes, give me that, please. <laughs> Redo the cover for me, just for me, please. Uh, I like the kind of pop art way they've done the pictures on this one as well. It goes with the fire nature of the album. Um, and there's a, a letter. Please tell Walter Dean I have $20,000 due me and I'd like to have the check dated as of January the 1st, 1970. Sincerely yours, Miles Davis. So, T.O. Cicero's office, Columbia Records, that was sent to. <laughs> he didn't take no shit off nobody. Um, music. I'm only vinyl pickup this month, it's been a very quiet one. This is an album that I've got. Two CDs. Two CDs. Two vinyl. Two CDs, two vinyl. God, the cursor is real. Um, and there's a reason I picked this one up again. Moon Dog Matinee, the band, um, UK Capital Pressing. Um, first press though, which is nice. But that's not the only reason I picked it, because my other one was also a first press. But this is the first one I've managed to find in the wild that has the actual bloody poster. Which it's not a, a, an insert, it's a proper poster, so it's not just, you know, there's a whole band in the cafe there. Yeah, nifty. So, almost always these have been trimmed down if you do find them to just have the vinyl size, or people just cut this bit out because the rest of it doesn't have the band on it, so they just go with this bit. Um, even some CDs that have replicated it, like Japanese, only goes with this bit to get just the five members of the band in. Whereas the poster goes on for a lot more than that, if you get the original. And finally, that's it. So, after buying it three times, I'm able to Frankenstein it and take uh, the poster from this, the cover from another, and the uh, the covers maybe G to VG on this, but there are a couple of tears at the top, so I've got a better condition. And then take the records from another one um, and make a perfect copy, near the near mint of of uh, Moondog Matinee. Right onto the movies. Arrow Video's release of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Just announced today they finally got their act in order and they're doing a reissue program because the disc on this is really bad um i mean it's it's always been a grainy film but geez louise um and the colors are so washed out you'd think it was black and white um but they're doing a reissue and if you order direct which i did you, you're automatically sent it um incredibly powerful visceral film 
Um, it's one of those ones where you think you've seen, a bit like Texas Chainsaw, you think you've seen a lot more violence than you actually do by the end of it. But it's just so depressing and downbeat that it, you feel filthy afterwards. I mean, I normally feel filthy anyway, emotionally and physically. But, um, you know, after Henry, everybody will feel like me. I'm sorry about from Eureka this past week is the, I never pronounced this bloody word right, Politzioteki, sorry Italy, uh, Politzioteki uh, film Revolver with Oliver Reed, um, film just about the time of the Musketeers, so 73, um, so he was fantastic in those wasn't he, in fact I might send this back and order another copy of The Musketeers. Um, and it's directed by Sergio uh, Salima, who did uh, The Big Gun Down. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's just uh, one of those. Uh, uh, Fabio Testi's in it as well, I should say. From Many's, uh, Many's an Italian uh, schlock piece. Uh, and some good stuff as well. I'm um, talking about schlock pieces. Um, I think it was Chris Hallow that recommended this. If it wasn't, the hell have I done? Um, but I watched it the other night and it's terrific. The Black Gestapo, um, the Ghetto Warriors, um, basically, um, black guys get sick of the Mafia running LA, so they run them out. But then two warring factions of black uh, black people take up against each other. Um, and half of them do literally dress as Nazis. So that's, you know, that's not a salacious poster. That's very representative of the actual film. It's either the most heavy handed political commentary you've ever seen in your life or some of the funniest. It depends on how you look at it. I don't know. I kind of loved it. I kind of loved it. Um, it's from Code Red. Um, Code Red, the most bonkers label in the world and the old crazy bastard that runs it who shouts at his own customers on Facebook and tells me fuck off. I kind of love that. I kind of like somebody who's so aggressively angry that it just comes round again to be funny. This was a, a, a oh, I spent a lot on this, three pounds um, a pick up for, because Red Letter Media did a video on it. I thought for three pounds, Grace, it costs more than that to rent it on uh, YouTube even. Um, it's a late 80s, early 90s action schlock uh, should be canon kind of movie, Stone Cold with Brian Bosworth, um, but the reason to see it is Lance Henriksen's in a man, and Lance is in full bad guy mode. Um, so, yeah, it's for, you know the cover is very much trying to sell you. It's, it's kind of like Terminator. It's nothing like Terminator. Um, it's more like Cobra with Stallone, but it's uh, it's cheap, cheesy fun. Um, you know, if you like those old school actioners from the eighties, where um, you know, everything that bumps into everything automatically blows up. Where every single car chase must have a fruit stall and some cardboard boxes. You always drive around the cardboard box district in a car chase. This is your kind of jam. Brian Bosworth's terrible in it, but that kind of makes it better. You know, it's one of those so bad it's good. Hence being on Red Letter Media's Best of the Worst. So, you know, was it Best of the Worst or was it one of the showcase apps. I can't remember but it was fun anyway. Um, the Mountain of the Cannibal God which I picked up from my Stacey Keach collection. Now you might notice the glare there but then that, there's a patch here. There's a reason for that. They've made this patch very cleverly, this sticker that you can peel off because if you lift, you don't need to peel it off but you can lift this, you know, the actual cover out and have a look it's because um, hmm, Ursula Andress shows a bit of titty on the cover and they uh, photoshopped it up to you know cover her a little so you know classy move guys classy move you know you could have went with a nice painted cover or something but you obviously wanted to tell people Ursula Andress gets her tits out in this so buy it I suppose that's their marketing model but um, <laughs> Probably not Stacey Keach's finest hour, but I went with it anyway because, you know, I love Stacey Keach. He doesn't get his tits out. His masculine tits. But they also give you a Cannibal Paradise board game, which they say is based on an ancient game. Yes, Snakes and Ladders. The film of the late great Michael Reeves. Now this is definitely a Curse is Real pick up because um, Castle of the Living Dead already owned because it's in the Christopher Lee Eurocrypt box set. 
and there's more extras than that. This one's got bugger all. And um, the sorcerers, I already own this exact version, and the witchfinder general, I already own this exact version. Um, but the reason you have this one is it does have a 90 minute long movie documentary about Michael Reeves' incredibly short life. He died at 25. He'd already made these movies. He'd already directed Boris Karloff, Vincent Price, um, Christopher Lee, Donald Sutherland. Died at 25. Pill overdose. So, yeah, the opioid epidemic can't anything new, folks. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's a nice hard box from Screenbound. I think it was 20 quid or something, you know. I'll, I'll make a couple of quid back selling the old copies and. I love Michael Reeves, so you know, to have the box is nice. So. And the documentaries, just the pepper on it. Um, the Alligator People um, is an upgrade from DVD, from 101 films. This is actually a really fun 50s B movie with Richard Crane and Beverly Garland. Uh, Lon Chaney's in it as well, obviously, Junior. Senior was long dead, so I couldn't see some of the crap that his son was doing, but um, you know, this is actually for him pretty good. Lon Chaney Jr. If he wasn't called Lon Chaney Jr., you people wouldn't love him as much as you do. I'm telling you, all you uh, Universal fans. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 20th Century Fox. It was done in CinemaScope, so it was it was one of those big studio movies trying to pretend that a low budget indie drive-in movie. You know, trying to get in on that market. Um, fun little schlocky horror from the 50s. The schlocky horror picture show. What you can't describe as horror is neo-Nazism. There's a transition for you. Um, Ryan Gosling, look at him there, we, we baby Ryan. Um, so this is not long after he played young Hercules on that TV show, if you remember. Hercules in the 90s with Kevin Sorbo, was it? Um, there was the young Hercules spin-off, Ryan Gosling with his long hair played Hercules Jr. Um, and here he is a couple of years later, this is 2001, and he's a, a Nazi. But he's also a Jew. Dun, dun, dun. So it's how he reconciles with it. Um, it's very, very dark, but it's very humane as well. It tries to get in the psyche of just trying to fit in, even though you know that the everyday around there would hate you if they knew the truth. So you can kind of apply it to different circumstances about sexuality or any, any kind of minority, really, um, and, and the need to feel wanted. Um, so it kind of makes a good double bill with something like American History X because there's crossover in theme but not in, in approach and uh, an outcome. Um, so yeah, it's one of the first films that, in fact, that is the first film that really made Ryan Gosling go from um, child star to Ryan Gosling. <laughs> so, and I love myself some Gosling. Uh, meantime, meantime. So, yeah, uh, the special edition. This is the Mike Lee movie, never been on blue, uh, but with Gary Oldman as a Gary young man. Um, and there's Phil Davis, and there's Tim Roth on the cover. Uh, he is, but you'll barely make him out there. Tim Roth's there as well. Alfred Molina. So star-studded affair, as Mike Lee movies always are. This is way back in the eighties. It's a very wry uh, skinhead movie. Um, again, about you can family relationships, um, but all a kind of response to Thatcher's Britain and what you've what she's done to Britain. You know that, that she's taken away all possibility. That turns people like this loose. You know, so recommended if you're a fan of any of the people that I just mentioned, and you should be because it's Gary Oldman, Tim Roth, Phil Davis, and Alfred Molina, for goodness sake, and Mike Lee, Nathan Jones picked this up recently and it reminded me that um, first of all I love me from Nathan John but second of all it reminded me I've not got that and I've got everything these two guys have ever done um, it's the Hitchcock Truffle so um, yeah not much to be said it's the, it's the doc about Truffle when he was still relatively minor in the world uh, film industry but had already made a few masterpieces unbeknownst to most people outside of well, Europe, uh, but uh, Hitchcock had clearly never heard of him or seen any of his movies. Um, so Truffaut goes back to his old job as film critic and interviews Hitchcock. Um, but they strike up a great rapport, and Hitchcock reveals a lot about himself and his work and his approach and his craft. 
Um, it's a fascinating documentary about two fascinating directors. And you get to see Truffaut, as you can see here, just totally idolising Hitchcock and taking it all in. And it's fascinating to see what you can pick up on in Truffaut movies pre and post his relationship with Hitchcock. So, hmm, maybe a video on that. But um, they also give you the, the documentary about you know the the famous meeting which has Scorsese as if he wouldn't be on something like this Wes Anderson, Dave Fincher, Peter Bogdanovich, rest in peace, Olivia Sayers, James Gray, uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa, Richard Linklater, Paul Schrader, oh, I love Paul Schrader, love him, I talked to him on Facebook recently, he was really nice, um, The Fall of the Roman Empire, one of those epics that I thought why have I not got that on Blu-ray? If you're going to have an epic, you should have it on Blu-ray. Um, it's Anthony Mann, who did all the great Jimmy Stewart westerns that I've recently reviewed. Um, but this is one of your uh, ridiculously good casts that actually <laughs> top build is Sophia Loren, then Stephen Boyd, then Christopher Plummer, then Alec Guinness, then James Mason. So you could you could argue that the acting quality goes down as the, the star. <laughs> um, regardless, they're all in it. Um, I mean, they like everybody in it. They're all stars and they're all good actors, but James Mason and Alec Guinness, man, come on. And Christopher Plummer. I'll tell you a story about him one time. Uh, it involves singing Edelweiss. Um, Mr. Vampire from Eureka. One that I just keep meaning to pick up and I didn't do, so I did. It's kind of the end of that story. No, it was um, a horror comedy from 1980, I want to say. Uh, 1985, <laughs> only five years out, um, and it kind of set the tone for a lot of films that would come afterwards. But they did a horror comedy, but with folklore um, from Asia, um, Hong Kong blockbusters and things that were, you know, just done as like Jackie Chan vehicles. All of a sudden, you could get these piss takes really, but they were fun, and it's it's actually a really good doorway into a lot of mythology that you wouldn't otherwise pick up, as is Human Lanterns, um, just out from 88 films, um, with Barry Forshaw doing a, uh, the booklet on it, and audio commentary, all sorts. Um, this is the Shaw Brothers, um, and it was 1982. Um, they describe it as um, Hammer Horror, if it was done in Hong Kong by a slasher director, and I think that's kind of right, because um, it is very Kensington gore, it is very Hong Kong craziness, um, but it's fun, it's, it's bonkers fun, but yeah, Human Lanterns, not as good as Mr Vampire though, so if you, would, if you want one of those to go with that. The first film of Mr Marlon Brando in 1950 was The Man. So, yep, just out from the BFI, a dual format edition of The Men, uh, with Brando, Everett Sloan, Jack Webb, great cast, hit Theresa Wright, uh, directed by the great Fred Zinnemann, um, Brando plays a paraplegic in it, um, and it's, <laughs> it's just insane, um, you know, you've got your writer director from, from High Noon in here, um, a couple of years earlier, I think. Yeah, 52, I think that was, and this is 50. Um, Brando, first movie, straight out of the gate, he's Marlon Brando. There's no, well, you can see glimpses. He's Brando in this. Unreal. If you've never seen The Men, pick up this edition, because it is, as usual with the BFI, absolutely stacked. And you get a DVD with it as well, so you can lend that to your granny. A couple of pickups here that I made so long ago that I thought, have I done those in a video? But they've just been sitting on the shelf. I've been too busy watching Jimmy Stewart movies until the cows come home. Uh, the Roy Anderson collection has complete oeuvre. Um, great Swedish existentialism, which for some reason, somebody thought a big good idea to do as a pop-up. And I think so, because when I think Swedish existentialism, I think pop-up. Um, so yeah, it's all his, all his films. He's never been the most prolific. Be officially announced after his last. That would be his retirement feature. Um, so you've got my personal favourite there, a pigeon sat in a branch reflecting on existence. Maybe my favourite film title as well. The documentary about him being a human person. I like to tidy these discs up as well. Um, about endlessness. 
uh, you the living uh, a Swedish love story it's very modern plain and white and uh, songs from the second floor but um, <laughs> these films are all strangely uplifting in their own bizarre offbeat and downbeat way sometimes um, they are existential and they are bleak but with a very if you tuned into that Nordic sensibility which I think um, came down with the Vikings through Scotland and the Celtic countries because um, there's, there's a lot of crossover um, so yeah it's, it, I love it I think it's a terrific um, box set of, of a real um, future great director you know just with this catalogue because he ain't making it anymore he'll still be regarded as one of the greats I think and in years to come um, and again if you only watch one watch um, uh, a pigeon sat on a branch reflecting on existence because it's one of the best films I saw in the 2010 that's a fuckload of movies in the 2010 the, the proposition um, again I feel like I've had this for a thousand years um, well actually I have had it for a long time because I had the old blurry um, this I can't believe is 17 years old this movie god I thought it was a bit eight years old um guy pierce my man remember him from neighbors neighbors may you rest in peace um and um ray winston john hart david wenham emily watson um it is just a stunning australian western uh, written by Nick Cave of Nick Cave and the Bad Seed, who also does the music with Warren Ellis. Directed by John Hillcoat, who would go on to direct some fantastic movies. John Hillcoat's another director that I think uh, will be regarded very highly in years to come as a as a really good uh, kind of uh, gritty uh, director. Um, but yeah, if you've never seen the Proposition, get on it. Guy Pearce always does his best work in these kind of roles. Not you know crap like the time machine that Hollywood tried to pigeonhole him in because he was reasonably handsome looking you, if you like guy be guy you know not that prison movie you know that um, that uh, escape from New York piss take that was in space and I think John Carpenter sued them and won because it was so obviously a rip off of, of, uh, of that yeah. uh, the three monster tales of sci-fi terror box from Eureka um, so you have again Lon Chaney popping up, Grant Williams from uh, from The Incredible Shrinking Man, the great Lionel Atwell, the son of Frankenstein himself. Um, in three movies, you've got Man Made Monster from 1941, uh, Monolith Monsters, and uh, Monster on the Campus by the great Jack Arnold. Um, just fun movies, man, fun movies. If you like your Universal uh, monsters and horror. And you want to go a bit, bit left to centre. Excuse me, on your side that'll be left to centre. Um, then, yeah, just pick it up. Um, limited edition, but the repress will still have all the on-disc content. They just won't have the booklet and the uh, slipcover and the alternative sleeve and things. So, you know, yeah, pick it up. Man. It's only like twenty-two pounds, and you get three, three movies with loads of extras from the exact kind of people that you want it to be talking about this kind of movie. So, yes, indeed. Do you remember a few seconds ago I said Neighbours, R.I.P. because everybody in Britain's favourite Australian soap has been cancelled after 300 years it's the soap opera that launched Russell Crowe, Guy Pearce Kylie Minogue and probably some other people well, it also launched Harold from Neighbours and here we have him in the horror movie from the 90s, Body Melt um, from 88 films when I made the order to pick up a few things um, I had to get it over a threshold for postage and I literally had to spend five pounds so I went into the cheapest section <laughs> and I just had a look about and I thought okay okay body melt I don't know about this and then I saw that Harold from Neighbours was in it took it as a sign because I loved Harold and I loved Madge Madge with a voice like that she smoked 5,000 fags a day God bless her she was great and Harold was fun too. Went missing for about five years, that to left to do stuff like this, you know. Great, great career. Um, and then came back, Ian Smith, I think his name is, and then came back and their explanation after he'd fallen off a cliff and died was he didn't die, he lost his memory. 
and join the Salvation Army. Uh, one of the other titles that I picked up from ATA, which is an upgrade uh, from the old Arrow DVD, which I'm still keeping because it's got different extras, um, is Street Trash. Um, uh, <laughs> I love, this is a bit like um, um, Frankenhooker in that it's pure 40 second street nonsense and I love it for it, I love it. Um, it is... <laughs> a liquor store owner, I was trying to get the word what the Americans call it instead of off license. A liquor a liquor store owner decides that there's too many damn bombs around here. Um, and he decides that he's going to come up with this lethal booze to kill off the homeless. So he only sells to the good clients and whenever a bum comes in, he gives them some of the dodgy shit. This is what it does to them. Watch it. If you like cheesy, schlocky B-movies that know exactly what they are from the 80s. Street Trash. I think it was nominated for uh, Best Picture. You know, same year Driving Miss Daisy was. Uh, oh, I should have had this with the uh, the other two Hong Kong films, but it's Encounter of the Spooky Kind. Um, very similar idea, a whole new subgenre of Asian cinema. Uh, the Zhang Shishi film or something it was called. Um, it's supernatural, it's it's funny, it's uh, Samuel Hung directs it, um, who I've did the members from Martial Law from Channel 5 <laughs> with Arsenio Hall. Um, some great um, choreography, some great scares, some great effects. If you like horror comedies, it's just full of them, man. It's just absolutely full of them. I'm not a particularly big fan of Wish You movies and Shaw Brothers things. Um, but I do find that I love their humour, you know, and I love their inventiveness. Um, so, yeah, Sam O'Hung, before they got addicted to the burgers and be <sighs> became me. Um, <laughs> if anybody watched my June video, not many people did, though. <laughs> I think I made it too late, you know, the hype had died then. Um, you, I showed off, not just, I show off, I don't like it when people say that, I actually showed, I showed off. Ugh. No, I, I don't show off. I, I, I present, um, I presented the, uh, uh, all the version, I didn't just show, show, present the new version of Dune on Steelbook. I went through all the different versions, including about five different ones from David Lynch that I own. Um, and I went through the sci-fi movie Blu-rays uh, and about 10 minutes after I bloody uploaded that video they said you know what we should release a deluxe edition of our sci-fi channel remake hmm. so they did this is the three disc with a two hour documentary about the making of the miniseries so I picked that up too because you need another version of just the sci-fi channel version um, but actually this is bloody terrific it's got Alec Newman as Paul Maudib um, it's got um, William Hurt R.I.P. we lost him recently um, as as um, Duke Leto um, it's got a terrific cast Saskia Reeves as is, is, uh, Paul's mother in it um, the Benny Jesuit um, you know, it's just it's just terrific. Um, and if you ever and the cinematographer on it is bloody Vittorio Storaro from The Last Emperor and Apocalypse Now, probably not the thing he wants to be remembered for. But you know, listen, it's really good. It was the highest budget sci-fi channel thing ever, which okay, maybe not saying too much, but still, it it does more with June to create a world than the original Lynch one did. As much as I love it. Or the new one does, because the new one's a lot more subdued. Um, but Denise still has part two to go, and that's where the bulk of the story is. We've not even really gotten to more deep yet, so this recommended. Recommended. I love this version of Dune. And if you want to argue with me, please feel free. I'm, I'm, I'll pay for differences of opinion. Uh, one of the great movies, by the way. One of the greats. Um, John Sayles, Matawan. Um, Again, this was from 88, so this is one of the ones that I um, had to get over the threshold. Um, to, so that's why I ended up buying 
Hard Road from Neighbours does horror. Um, but this is a, a fantastic film. Chris Cooper really made his name with this. And, you know, he went on to, of course, be Chris Bloody Cooper of some fantastic, you know, obviously American Beauty and things like that. And probably his greatest achievement, uh, the 2011 um, The Muppets. Uh, you know, maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. <laughs> I love Chris Cooper. Um, but yeah, um, backwater town, West Virginia, there's going to be a workforce strike at the coal company. Um, you know, if you're a union person, if you're a lefty, this is your cup of tea. Um, if you're on the side of the big business and um, and the company, and, you know, not standing up for what you believe, probably not for you. Because um, this film is not presenting both sides as being equal. You know, we're not doing this good and bad on both sides bullshit. It's saying, no, fair day's pay for a fair day's work. Yeah. Matter one. Also out from Criterion in America, but those have some exclusive extras. Uh, in fact, quite a lot by 88 standards, so yeah. James Earl Jones, of course, was in it as well. And then finally, finally, another political techie. I think I'm saying it right now. I think I've just heard so many other people say that I've now picked it up by osmosis. Osmosis, there's a good word for you. Used in correct context for a change. Um, so we've got Rogue Cops and Racketeers, two crime thrillers by Enzo G. Castellari. There we go. You know, they always have these wonderful painted covers whenever they do a Polizio Techie. Um, and this is no different. So we have a wonderful big arrow book. Here's the Heroin Busters. <laughs> um, with Fabio Testi, who we saw earlier. Um, and Revolver with uh, Oliver Reed. Uh, and David Hemmings. David Hemmings from uh, Blow Up. Yes, Blow Up not blow out, all with reversible covers, um, and then David Hemmings of course went on to much later be in Gladiator with those ridiculous eyebrows, and then we have, uh, I'm in the Heroin Busters, what a great title as well, and a very weird title for the sequel to The Damn Busters, what were they thinking, and then The Big Racket, uh, with uh, again Fabio Testi, it should be called the Fabio Testi Collection, yeah, I'm going to complain. Um, and then a postcard, as you always get from her for an upcoming release. Another Ed Grant poll is a coming. What could it be? What could it be? We've already had the big poll cycle from Roger Corman, so yeah. Um, yeah, these will come out in standard editions eventually. You'll lose the uh, reversible covers, but yeah, recommended. You're not getting massive surprises with any of these kind of movies. They're almost all Dirty Harry rip-offs or variations. If you've seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's exactly the kind of movie that Rick Dalton was going over there to make. Um, but they're, they're just ridiculously fun, ridiculously over the top and silly at times. And when you add in the terrible dubbing, but the because Italian movies um, usually were all dubbed for every market, um, so they could. Uh, employ actors from all over the world and it didn't matter um, so you know occasionally you get some wonderfully bad dub Whew. right I think you've been patient enough I'll let you away and have your tea um, should you have any comments queries or complaints or general mockery feel free to stick in the comment section below should you uh, have anything else uh, then I don't know Still drop a comment, I'll see if I can help you out. I can't promise anything, but you know. I'm a nice guy, I try and help where I can. A uh, couple of shout outs at the end actually, I'm gonna shout out uh, Ryan, Ryan Gavalier from, uh, from Ryan's Vinyl Destination. He's been kind enough to shout me in the videos, we've become buddies. Um, new friends, I love new friends. And um, he's, he's a terrific guy. Great YouTube channel, Ryan's Vinyl Destination. Um, wonderful, just so deep in the, the music dives, it's not real. Uh, Nathan Jones, you already had a dedication, but I'm still giving you a shout out, just Nathan Jones. I've done a video uh, on my channel where I talk about doing a video with him. Ooh, that sounds a bit self-indulgent, doesn't it? Here's a video about what I've done when you're not watching a video about me, it was also about me. Um, but, um, 
Anyway, I've, I did a series, uh, an episode with Nathan on his uh, film journey uh, uh, series, which was, um, I was going to say it was terrific. I meant it was terrific to do, it wasn't, to, actually it was terrific, no, I was great. People say, some very smart people are saying, very smart people, that it was the best episode of the film journey. Mm. Um, and finally, Gary of the Elysiums, Gary of the Elysiums. Great channel for millions and millions of uh, music pickups throughout the month. Jeez Louise, every couple of days he's bought another 358 CDs. Um, great taste in music. He loves his album covers, um, especially Ramstein and the like, you know. Anyway, for now, I have been David. You have been terribly patient. Again, back on Sunday, yeah, Sunday, for a Frank Capra, Jimmy Stewart double bill. Um, maybe something else over the week, I can't promise, because I'm wicked and I'm lazy, to quote David Byrne. But do me a favour before you go, huh? Just be careful with that. For me, love and mercy, my dears. Love and mercy. <laughs>